So as part of uh, putting up some uh, interesting math for you, uh, we'll be following uh, several themes. One of the themes is a set of uh, lectures which have been put up by the uh, Russian uh, mathematical education site. It lists 41 lectures given by professional uh, Russian mathematicians to school children. So you can imagine uh, a lecture that is uh, reachable to high school students and given by highly experienced uh, mathematicians will have something for you. Now, if all goes well, we'll have a look at several of them. So for example, there's one by Arnold, uh, who's a near fields medalist. Then uh, there is uh, also a couple of uh, introductions to important topics that we would like to get into. Now, for today, I picked up the first uh, lecture in this set. It is uh, given by a mathematician called Tycho uh, uh, Miro. Now, if you look up to Tycho Miro, you will find uh, several wonderful uh, articles, books written by him for high school students. And uh, he's a highly accomplished mathematician. Now, in this first lecture in this series, Tikamaro's topic is um, great uh, mathematicians and uh, some of their favorite theorems and some famous and uh, favorite uh, theorems. Now he's picked up um, five, and um, I'll have to figure a way out of uh, discussing all the five with you. Now what you will notice is I have a strategy. Um, most of it is going to be documented for you and uh, you'll be urged to look into the documentation. Now, the real problem of course is uh, I can just uh, give you this article and get done with it. The only slight problem is that it's in Russian. Now, there are parts of the article uh, which are available in English and I will direct them to you and will not talk about it. And there are parts of the article which I think I will take the effort of using Google Translate and documenting it carefully and giving it to you. Now, what you will notice is that the presentation by Tikkamono is amazing. Uh, the way he reaches out with uh, reaches out to you with the essence and uh, in such a way that uh, you can follow his image is quite remarkable. Okay, so let's start with his first one. What are the mathematicians that? Um, he uh, talks about. Uh, so as I said he uh, he's taken four. Now the first one is um, Archimedes, and uh, then uh, he also talks about the theorem of Fermat, and uh, then uh, there is uh, Euler, and then there is a branch, and uh, finally uh, there is one by Gauss. Now, what he says is he picked up this list because these people uh, were very proud of this particular results of theirs. And um, so what I do now is jump in straight into Archimedes' uh, theorem that uh, he discusses. Now this is uh, particularly straightforward and simple but quite remarkable. Now, Archimedes um, was particularly fond of it and as the story goes, uh, he wanted it on his tombstone and uh, there is a record of the orator Cicero uh, talking about the fact that uh, his wish was fulfilled. So what is this theorem? Now, Archimedes um, was pretty much uh, aware of the volume of a cylinder as pi r square h. Now here r is the radius and h is the height of the cylinder. And uh, he was also aware of the fact that the volume of cone is one third pi r square h. Now apparently this uh, formula for the cone uh, doesn't depend so much on the fact that the base is circle, the base can be any shape and you still have a formula that it is equal to the one third uh, base area into height. But that aside, uh, uh, volume of a cone one third pi r square h um, probably figured out by Archimedes by the method of slicing, which is what we're going to discuss here. Now, the interesting thing is that Archimedes was able to figure out 
that the volume of uh, sphere with the help of this. And what he realized is uh, the volume of this hemisphere is equal to volume of the cylinder minus the volume of the cone and he had a very wonderful and neat uh, proof for this. And that's what we're going to look at now. So, if that is so, then of course uh, the volume of the hemisphere is equal to this minus this and we are done. So, how do I convince you that um, the volume of the hemisphere is equal to the volume of the uh, cylinder minus the volume of this cone? So, for this, uh, what we do is uh, we'll take the um, radius of the cylinder and the height of the cylinder is 1 as I've written here. Now, the radius and height is 1, then uh, this is again the same height as this cylinder. Uh, so, this height is 1 and the radius of the base is 1. Now, here in this hemisphere, the uh, radius is 1. So, this is 1 and this is 1. So, these are the uh, shapes that we are going to look at. Now, if you look here, what I am going to do is uh, just go to draw the front view. That will just make my calculation quite easy. And um, so this is the cylinder, it's got a radius of 1 and a height of 1 and this is the cone, the front view, which has got a height of 1 and a radius of 1 and um, then we have the uh, hemisphere, which has got a height of 1 and it's got a radius 1 throughout. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, slice this up. And please notice that they are all the same height. So if you just go to slice this up like this, small slices, and continue the slice here, continue the slice here, and we will maintain the uh, thickness of this uh, slice, uh, let's call it delta, as uh, same throughout. Every time we slice, we'll take the same thickness delta. And uh, delta will be small, as small as we wish. And we continue to do this, um, make slices throughout. Now, what we are going to prove is that a particular slice at some height h, this volume of this slice will be equal to the volume of this slice plus the volume of the slice here at the same height h at the same height h and at the same height h and uh, since this is true for every slice if we manage to prove that uh, this volume is equal to this volume plus this volume then we are done. Now these are discs. So the volume of this uh, disc is going to be uh, the radius is uh, 1 and the thickness is delta. So pi r square that is 1 into 1 into delta that is equal to pi delta. So this is the volume of this disc. Now this disc, um, keep in mind that uh, it's a thin disc and uh, there are many such discs. This radius, now because this is 1 and this is 1, uh, this is an isosceles triangle with the 90, 45, 45, uh, which is the same thing here, 90, 45, 45, it's an isosceles triangle. So this radius of the disc is also h. So the radius of the disc, which is at a height h from the top, is also h. And therefore, the volume of this disc is going to be pi r square, in this case h square, into thickness, which is delta. You can see uh, that the calculations are very straightforward. And now I just need to know what is the uh, radius of this disc here at a height h. Now that is very simple, thanks to Pythagoras theorem. Uh, one of our favorite theorems and therefore this radius and mind you this, uh, this is 1 and the radius of the hemisphere is 1 so the radius of this disc is simply going to be um, root of 1 minus h square and what we are looking for is pi 
R square into thickness, which is delta, and that is equal to pi into 1 minus h square into delta. And uh, it's very straightforward. Now, just add this up to this, and uh, you can see that the plus h square delta gets uh, cancelled with the minus h square delta, and all you're left with is pi delta. So if you just add these two up, you just get phi delta, which is nothing but the area of this disk, and you're done. So this proves that um, the volume of the hemisphere is equal to the volume of this minus this, and that would mean uh, how much is this? That would mean uh, pi, because r is 1 and h is 1, minus r is 1 and h is 1, minus 1 third pi, how much is this? 2 pi by 3 and that proves Archimedes' favorite theorem which is that the volume of the sphere is uh, twice of the hemisphere that is 4 pi by 3 and uh, if you just scale it up then uh, it will be r cubed times uh, 4 pi by 3 pi uh, a very nice article on scaling is available in uh, Lang's uh, uh, I think there are, it's called Lang's uh, Lectures for uh, School Children. I'll uh, pass on the reference. Now, what else is covered in this talk by Um There are, I said, I mentioned four other names. So, in my next video, I will briefly tell you about the four theorems. But let me tell you that I'm not going to present the proof in, the, in a form of video form. But um, some of them, like I said, where I'm not able to get you the... Um, English article, I'm going to write it up myself. Uh, the one problem with that is that uh, it will be handwritten because I'm slightly short of time. But I hope that uh, it will be neat enough that you'll be able to follow it pretty easily. And wherever, I'm, wherever it's possible for me to get you an uh, English um, article of the proof, I'll just direct you to the proof. Now, uh, one, uh, I'm going to upload the uh, magazine in which the proof appears. So I would suggest that you download the magazine and look at the article that I'm referring to. All the details that I want you to follow uh, to reach to the documentation, I shall um, post it in my blog and um, just have a look at it. Meanwhile, also look out for the next video, but I'll give you a brief overview of the uh, four theorems that Tikamaro was uh, talking about. And Lastly, I would once again like to acknowledge that uh, there is absolutely nothing uh, that I have contributed. I just, uh, I'm just referring you to the article and I'm uh, repeating it as it is given there. So, Tikamaro does mention his objective for uh, giving this talk. He says that uh, uh, you'll be uh, inspired by these examples of these famous mathematicians to you know, uh, learn the subject fearlessly. And in particular, you know, when you talk about Archimedes, you generally remember the uh, labor, Eureka, and um, he had a very good estimate for pi. I believe that um, uh, he, it was known to him that uh, pi, uh, this, uh, pi lies in between um, these two fractions. Uh, this is another good achievement by um, Archimedes. Um, this is the standard 22 by 7. Then um, Heron's formula apparently also was known to Archimedes. So, uh, if you, uh, and of course, we remember the uh, famous image you know, of Archimedes working on his math at the site of his murder. But having uh, heard of all these stories about Archimedes, uh, this one we should never miss. In fact, Ravi Vakil also has a nice um, write up on the same. Uh, proof by Archimedes and what we really want to note as uh, Stikamano says is that you know he was it gave him particular joy uh, creative joy when he got this theorem so much so that he wanted it on his tombstone.